Good morning and welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we've got a beautiful day here today. I got a little bit of a late start. It's about noon, so we're gonna work on a driveway here. And that's the front part of the driveway. Uh, and it goes back through the woods here. It's got some pretty deep holes in it. And we'll look at those here in just a few minutes. We'll get this truck unloaded. builds a road like this it's usually just to get through uh, with not much thought about what it's going to look like in the future when there's no way for somebody like me to come in and properly grade the road and uh, ditch it and then crown it put some shoulders on it to where the water will run away so more or less when these roads are first built um, they're just to get into the property at the moment but this this particular road has been here for quite a while. This is really an old farm road that came through this property and they've turned it into a driveway to the house. So we're gonna work on it, see if we can get it towards more manageable and use, usable. This road was in better shape. He had some of the holes fixed pretty good, but he had an area that we just went through there, he had it logged and there was some log trucks and heavy equipment using it and uh, they beat these holes back out where he had them fixed this one be pretty easy we'll just cut that shoulder down right there cut that off so that water will drain out and then we'll build this up with some two inch rock and cap that crush run that right there will be easy fixed Road's in decent shape. Just needs a little bit of grade work done to it. Um, but the challenging parts are like this this hole coming up here. I think this is this may be the worst one. I know there's one more that's pretty bad. And what you see on both sides of the road is there's a, a page wire fence on both sides of the road to keep his sheep in. And it really makes this tight. So there's no way to shoulder that area right there and get that low enough so this water will drain out if i brought in the ex the mini excavator i could dig a little trench on the other side and dig a trench on this side to get the water to run out but he didn't want to he wasn't really interested in doing that much work to it as far as bringing the mini x in and working on both sides of the fence really just what we're going to do is essentially because i can't get rid of this water i'm just going to have to bridge it and put some two inch rock in here and build it up crown it on both sides to where i can get some crusher run on it and then get that sloped where the water will run off of the road part. Now, water's still gonna stand in here. There's there's no way to stop that water from standing unless we ditch that water out. And you can't do it without one taking the fence down or two spending quite a bit of time putting in a, a pipe underneath the, underneath the fence and that's not in the budget. So we're gonna build a bridge over it. And uh, like I said, the water's gonna stay in there. There's no way to keep it from staying there the way we're gonna have to fix it. This is another little rough patch area here. Uh, I'm basically just gonna clean this trash off, get as much of this leaf, leaf and uh, topsoil dirt that's washed in here, get it out. But this road, actually, this is the worst hole right here. And he did a little bit of work right there to try to get the water out. But uh, you really can't get it deep enough to get the 
water out like it needs to be. There's another way to fix it with dirt. Take some field dirt, clean it out real good, get all this water out, and uh, put some field dirt in here and pack it in. But this time of year, we're, what, two weeks from Christmas, and uh, did doing dirt work this time of year is just questionable. We had a lot of rain this weekend, uh, so ground doesn't dry out like it should in order to do that kind of work. So um, this time of year, what we're gonna do is just put that rock in it and bridge it. But this is deep. That hole right there is pretty deep, real deep. So it'll take a little bit of two inch rock to fix that. And I think that is the worst of it. I think that is the worst hole. So the rest of this out there here is just grading it a little bit, shaping it up cleaning out the sides of the roads. Yeah, there is one more hole here. And this one is, it has banks on both sides. This side over here and this side over here are both. This is quite a bit lower than either side of the road. So this is really a challenge to try to get water out of it. If the fence wasn't there, especially on this uh, left side, if that fence wasn't there, I could fix it easy. But we gotta work with what we have.
Well, we got the other two uh, cleaned out, and this is the this is the third one and the biggest biggest one we got left. And this hole right here is big enough to do some baptizing in. I'm telling you, this one's deep, and just in front of the skid steer there, it's a lot deeper than where it is right there. I'm not stuck. I just parked it there just for a minute, just kind of show you how deep it is, and and like I said, on up in here farther. It's, even deeper than that. Although going through this uh, hole here it reminded me of a story in the Bible where Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch uh, were discussing baptism and the Ethiopian eunuch was talking with Philip about the Lord and he said, here's water. What prevents me, prevents me from being baptized? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Let's get this one cleaned up. And uh, I think then we'll pretty much be ready for Go start hauling some rock in here. up against that fence and it really wants a way out of there i don't really have a way to get it out of there without getting on the other side and i can't because of all the trees and needs a little bit of work with the maniacs to reach over and get that out but that's not in the budget so i guess when i fill it up with rock that rock will push the water out of there and maybe raise it up high enough to cast that water and push that water on out so we'll try that got a little bit more work to clean this up Get ready for rock, but this is the last one. Last big one before we uh, go start hauling rock.
right, that'll do it. Uh, got that one fixed. Got it just like one. I got a quite a few inches of number two, two inch rock. What they call number three at the quarry here. Got that in, tracked in, and packed packed in good. So I'll, what I'll do with this now is tomorrow, uh, I'll drive the dump truck over it a few times and pack it in, get real good, especially where the tire tracks are going to run. And then I'm going to cap this with about three, four inches of, uh, probably four inches of crusher run. And then track that in real well with the skid steer and with the dump truck. Get that packed in real nice. If it doesn't pack like I want it to, then I'll go home and get the vibratory roller and really pack it in, make sure it's real good and tight. So, like I said earlier, there's still, there's still holes. It's, they're just full of rock and there's going to be water standing in those holes but this rock will also let water filter across and underneath and then and then go ahead and cross on over the road so we're higher than what the uh fence is on the right hand side so the water will still filter across underneath and through this rock so it won't be like driving through mud holes it ought to be bridged pretty well until we get done with it see you tomorrow well, good morning again. Diesel and I made it back for the second day on this uh, uh, road repair job. And we've got a few more loads of rock. Well, actually, we've already hauled, I think, three loads of number two, two of number two rock, two inch rock. Uh, got that put in place. I got the skid steer warming up now. We'll get that saw spread out and then we'll put some crusher run, cap that off. And we don't like a whole lot more on this job uh, having it done. Uh, yesterday, I mentioned when uh, I was talking about that hole that you could baptize in I mentioned uh, Philip when he was talking to the Ethiopian eunuch in the Bible days and he was talking to that eunuch about Jesus and uh, there's a lot in that there's a lot in there to study uh, we're just going to touch uh, the surface of some of it this morning but the eunuch was searching for the Lord and and he had been to Jerusalem and he had been there to worship, and the word says that he was uh, traveling back home when um, when Philip was responding to the to be obedient to the Lord, because the Lord told uh, Philip to go to this area, and then when he saw the chariot, he told him to overtake the chariot. So there's a lot there to learn in this about the obedience of following God's will and God's word when he uh, you know when he tells us to do something or ask us to do something. But in this situation, what I want to talk about is. Uh, that the eunuch was searching for the Lord and he was reading out the book of Isaiah Philip simply asked him after he overtook the scripture and was invited into the chariot there if he understood what he was saying understand what he was reading and and, and the eunuch said how can I unless someone uh, teaches me basically what he was saying so Philip then uh, in verse 35 of Acts chapter 8 uh, the Bible says this about that it says then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at that scripture, which the scripture that uh, the eunuch was reading, he preached Jesus to him. So that is important for you and for me today that we are to, to, to share the love of Jesus Christ with people that are uh, looking for that and, and trying to understand the scriptures or, or searching for the Lord. So what Philip's his simple message was, was to share Jesus with him, and that's what he did. So as they were traveling down the road, as they were talking, they came upon a, a body of water, and this is the part I want to, uh, I really want to talk about. They came upon that body of water, <clears throat> and uh, the Ethiopian eunuch said this. He said, "See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized?" So Philip said to him, "He said, this is crucial. He said, if you believe with all your heart, you may." And that was the condition of baptism was the fact that Philip. Uh, Philip was expressing the, the need for a belief in his heart before baptism was actually, would do him any good. So the uh, Ethiopian eunuch said this, he said, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So in that passage, in those couple passages of scripture, we find that it's not some mystical prayer or some magical prayer. Uh, to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's it's simply a belief, a belief in Jesus Christ. 
So the eunuch said there in that in that uh, passage of scripture in verse 37, he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then it says, so he the, he commanded the chariot to stop, to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and baptized him. So at the belief of the Ethiopian eunuch in Jesus Christ, he was a believer. He was saved at that point. Uh, his home was eternal in the heavens, and, and the, the Spirit of God began to uh, live with inside him. And I want to emphasize that belief. Um, I want to read to you Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, where it says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. Um, verse 10 goes farther. It says, From with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So salvation is simply a belief in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was raised from the dead, and that he died for your sins. Plain and simple. Um, there and then and then following that it's a life of obedience following the Lord studying his word uh, matter of fact the word says study the word to show yourself approved so so there's there's a there it's not complicated it's just simply a belief in Jesus Christ so uh, I hope that's encouraged you today if you're not a believer if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ and I, and I pray and I hope that maybe these passages of scripture will um, begin to work in your heart and if you are a believer in Jesus Christ I pray that you and I would be like that Philip was when he was called by the Lord to witness to this Ethiopian eunuch and the result of that witness was the fact that this eunuch this Ethiopian eunuch came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and I want to read just uh, one more part I just want, I want to read one more part of that, what it says about after the, uh, after the, the eunuch was baptized. It says in verse 39, Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went away rejoicing. Talking about the eunuch, the, Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch. After baptism, after salvation, he went away rejoicing in his new life. So uh, I thank you for the paying attention to that and and uh, spending a few minutes there digging in the word uh, when I was when I was uh, <laughs> unloading the rock here just a little while ago I, I guess I was going to try to be fancy and and uh, do some back spreading in a little slick area tight area that I should, probably shouldn't have done that so I had a little fail happen there and uh, I lost a part of the truck so you'll see that stay tuned we'll see that here in just a few minutes so I think the skid steer is about warmed up, and uh, Diesel and I are going to get back to work. As you can see that didn't go too well I tried to back spread that because I was slipping and sliding in that anyway I'm gonna back spread it and keep from sliding anymore that didn't go too well you can see I got into that tree and there's my there's my brace for my tarp it used to go right there I'll get somebody that could weld aluminum put that back on so that's the way things happen. So we'll try try something else now.
load there that I just dumped, I want to show you what happens when I talk about, or you hear somebody that spreads rock, what it means to bridge for the uh, material to bridge in the back of the tailgate. So I'll show you what that is. If you see that material right there, the tailgate is open right down here, but right there is where that material wedges against the tailgate and it won't let it come out evenly. So let me show you that. And that's what it looks like from the top. It just, it bridges there and it won't let the material slide out the gate. That's a pain. coming in kind of survey work we need to do we came in from the front side uh, so now we're going to be going from the back side out opposite way we did this, uh, yesterday morning so this is a look at it finished up on the way out property was just recently bought then and there was an old pool up here in 
that uh, was an insurance man's nightmare. So um, the insurance agent told them they want to get this cleaned up as soon as possible. I'll walk up here and look at it now compared to what it was. I've got a few pictures. There's an Instagram post as well, but uh, I've got a few pictures that I'll post with this video to show you what it looked like before, but it's looking really good. Got some grass growing on it. Turned out real nice right there. So. All right, we'll get this machine loaded up. Go to the house, get this one done. It's in the books. Just always remember the Lord loves you. God bless you. Appreciate you watching. Give us a big old thumbs up if you liked the video. Consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. And hit that little bell so you don't miss any. Get a notification of the next videos that we do. That's it. Thanks for watching.